Whether you like it or not, the use of AI in our day-to-day -day development workflow is rapidly evolving. And if you watch my channel, one thing I would recommend my subscribers do is stay on top of the new tools that are coming out, the new models that keep getting released what seems like every week, because these things can actually make you much more productive as a software engineer. Now, one of the main things that has been mentioned a lot recently is MCP which you might have already heard of. This is the first time I've actually made MCP content on my channel. So if you guys are not familiar with it, stick around, we're gonna learn about it. And I'm gonna show you a really great way to get started using MCP with just a couple of setup steps. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. It's just a fancy way of basically saying AI runs tools for you. One good example of MCP is basically the Postgres MCP server. So you can actually set up a server on your computer. And then when you actually interact with your IDE, for example, I'm using cursor right now, when you ask it to go and query your database, it can connect to your database and run the queries on behalf of the agent itself, and then continue to use the information it found to further its prompting. So that's just one example. There are a ton of different MCP servers out there that these various services are creating for you to use. And we will kind of talk about this in this video. Now, the other thing I want to cover in this video is running models locally. As of right now, when you want your applications to integrate with AI, typically you have to connect to a third party service. And that means that all of your prompts are going to be sent to their server. So that could be a security concern for you in your project. But also just having these models locally means they don't cost money having to keep on asking Claude for code generation costs money. So I'm gonna show you how you can set up these models locally and integrate an actual Tanstack start application to them that have the chat completion run without extra costs or without having to risk sending your prompts to some third party service. So for both of the things I mentioned, the MCP and running these models locally, we are gonna be using Docker desktop to make this extremely easy to set up. Now, before we dive into these important topics, which is MCP and running these models locally, I wanna give a special thanks to Docker for sponsoring this video. So right now I have Docker desktop installed and you will want to have this installed if you want to follow along with what I'm kind of talking about. But Docker desktop just released a new beta feature called models where you can easily pull in some of these models and they're actually going to run using your computer's hardware. We'll, we'll talk about that later. So let's first talk about the MCP toolkit, which is inside of Docker desktop. So basically, if you want to connect to these various third party services, such as AWS, we have the Brave engine, we have the Circle CI, you can actually have your AI agents connect to them and run these tools. The way this works is that we have all of these various services and they're kind of creating their own MCP servers that you can install manually on your machine and connect them with your IDE or whatever. Docker Desktop makes this extremely easy because any of these things you want, you can just go ahead and turn them on and then you can start connecting your agents in cursor or VS Code to your MongoDB database, to your Postgres instance, or to resend, right? It's very easy to kind of set this stuff up and allow your IDE to kind of run these various tools. So let's click on the GitHub official MCP server and you'll see that it has a list of all these tools. So the way this works is when you're coding, you can actually ask your AI agent to create a pull request, or you can ask them to leave a comment on a pull request. And it's going to look through these tools it's going to find the most relevant one, and then it's going to ask you if you want to run that. So once you have the server created, you can go to your MCP client. So in our case, I'm using Cursor, but they have support for Gordon or Claude Desktop. Basically, you want to configure your MCP client so that it can start interacting with your Docker MCP toolkit and start doing things. So I'm going to jump over to the Cursor, and I'm going to show you how we can actually interact with both of these MCP servers very easily. I will say that in order to get this working, you have to have Docker Desktop 4.42 or above. So just to check if you have this installed, you can do Docker MCP. And if you do have the right version, you will see this command show you some additional commands you can run. So if you have it set up correctly, I'm going to go ahead and just show you from scratch how you can connect this from Docker Desktop. So in my MCP client, go to cursor, I'm going to click connect. And that should automatically create this MCP JSON file inside of your cursor home directory. Now, if you want to do this manually, you can read through these steps. So just to kind of show you, I'm going to cap that and you'll see that we have some information about this MCP server and it tells Cursor how to connect to that Docker desktop MCP server at this location. Second thing you can do is let's go to my cursor settings and then I'm going to go down to MCP tools and you should see MCP Docker pop up over here and it should be enabled. So you'll notice here it says zero tools enabled. So now we need to go back and start turning on some of these MCP servers. So the first MCP server I want to install is this GitHub official one. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn it on. 
And when you do that, it's gonna ask you for a personal access token. So let's go back to GitHub. And if you go to your developer settings here, so settings slash personal access tokens, you should be able to create a fine grain token. Let's create one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just call this MCP cursor. And then we are going to find just one repository. I like to kind of be more fine grained with how I set stuff up. And we're gonna say docker hyphen, and we should have a chat app here. Let's click on this one. And that'll grant this token access to do things with this repository. And now you can go through here and give this token permission. So in our case, we're just gonna go ahead and just make read and write to GitHub issues. So like we can actually have it create an issue from um, cursor. I'm gonna click generate token. Click on generate token here and I'll go ahead and copy this token. So let's go back to the Docker desktop and I'm gonna paste this token in and I will go ahead and click the checkbox. And now we should have access to 38 tools. So I would double check the 38 here and kind of read through these and understand some of the things you should be able to do inside of your IDE now. And we'll go back over here and we might have to just kind of like refresh this. And then if I turn this on, you'll see that we have 51 tools enabled. And then you should see all those tools that were provided from GitHub. There is a warning. I'm not sure if Cursor knows how to support a lot of tools. So keep that in mind. We're going to kind of ignore that. But now we have the ability to hopefully do any of these. And again, based on the permissions you gave your token, you're not going to be able to do everything. Now that you have the MCP server hooked up and you have some tools showing up, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say, can you please create a GitHub issue that is called, I need you to make the landing page nicer. And I'm going to go ahead and click submit. And that should look through all the tools that we have. And it's going to try to use the most relevant one if it can find one. Otherwise, it'll just do the normal coding flow. So right now it's saying that it wants to call the create issue tool. And it kind of gives you some information about what it plans to send GitHub. So in our case, it's saying for this Docker chat app, it's going to send over this title. I'm going to go ahead and just say run tool. Okay. And then it's going to return you back the result. And now when it's done, we can go and we can see that we have an issue on our repo, which is pretty cool. We just integrated an MCP client, in our case, cursor with an MCP server. In our case, it was the GitHub official MCP server to give our agent access to do various things across our repository. From my opinion, this is very powerful. You can have your agents basically communicate with all of your different third party services to help you be more productive. Of course, there are security concerns with MCP. You don't want to blindly give an AI agent access to everything you own, but being able to pick and choose what agents you can kind of expedite your workflows. Now, I do want to try out one more thing. If I go and enable resend, I can actually send out emails from my cursor agent as well. I do already have a token set up here that you can set a reply to in a sender name. And I'm going to go ahead and just go and make sure that I have send email now. All right, now let's try to send out an email from my agent chat. I'm going to say, can you please send webdevcody at gmail.com an email that says, Hello world. I'll go ahead and send that off and it's going to search through my tools and it's going to see that I have one called send email. You can check out what it's going to send. Here's the text, the subject and who it's sending to. I'll click run tool. And in just a second, I should get an email in my Google Gmail account and we should be able to see that. And there you go. I have an email from admin at wdcstarterkit.com. Hello world. And that is how easy it is to integrate new MCP servers with Docker desktop, which I use Docker on all my side projects anyway, and I do a lot of containerization when I deploy to production. So just having this already available to me with Docker desktop is great. So that's the MCP portion of this video. We learned about the MCP servers, the clients, how to integrate with cursor and how it all kind of works. The other really awesome feature with Docker desktop is this beta models feature. So you can actually go to this models tab here and you can start installing various models and running them on your machine. And the cool thing about it is it's going to use your computer's hardware. So I have a MacBook Pro and I'll show you, we can build a small little application to connect to this model and we won't have to hit a third party service. We won't have to spend any money running these models. It's going to use my computer hardware, which gives me the security of not having my prompts leave my computer. So let's go and click on see the documentation and we're going to try to set up the model runner and get a model installed. Now, the first thing you should do is you should enable the model runner just in case you don't have it. So I'm going to go ahead and just run Docker desktop enable model runner. So if you run Docker model, you'll get a list of all these new commands that you can run to basically interact with these models that'll pull them and run them locally on your machine. So now if you go to Docker hub, there's actually a bunch of different models you can find. I'm going to try to find llama. 
And I'm going to do 3.2 for right now. I think it has like a smaller model that won't eat up all of my disk space. And you'll see there's a bunch of different model variants. I'm going to go ahead and just install this one. So I could just say Docker pull and I could literally just do this one. So I'll go over to my terminal. We'll say Docker model pool, and then I'll type in that model name. So that'll pull the model, and this will take some time. I think it's like two gigabytes or something. Let's go back, and it says the latest is 1.87 gigabytes, and it requires 2.77 gigabytes of VRAM. But again, just to point out, they have like the Gwyn 3 model. They have all these other models. DeepSeek, if you want to use that. They have Mistral. So definitely go around and play with these models if you want to try to run them locally. Now, the reason this is nice is because if you try to set up these models yourself, you typically have to go and read through the readmes of these models, how to, you know, build them, install them, and get them to run locally. And you have to find a way to integrate with them with whatever APIs they may be using. Docker models just consolidates everything into a single endpoint that you can invoke. And we'll see that in a second when we build out our simple Tanstack start project. All right, so the model is done downloading. So I'm going to go to my settings of Docker desktop, and I want to make sure that I have something set up. And you want to make sure if you go to features in development, if you go down to beta features, make sure that you have the Docker model runner enabled, which we did uh, with that CLI command earlier. But I also want to enable the host side TCP support. This will allow us to easily connect to it when we build out a Tanstack start application. And we can actually just start doing fetch requests to that uh, API to run the models locally. So make sure you have that. You may have to restart your uh, Docker desktop to apply that, but you do need to make sure that that is turned on. So just to show you that this is running locally, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my monitor over here. I'm gonna say, open up my GPU history. And we're gonna go and kick off a prompt that should use you know a decent amount of the AI model. I'm gonna say, can you list out 200 baby names for me. So I'm going to run that and you'll see over here we should get a giant spike of my GPU because it has to use a lot of GPU processing as it's kind of predicting what the next things it should print out for us. And when this is done, you'll see this thing drop back down. And as you can tell, this is actually running pretty fast, right? With the MacBook Pro, this runs pretty fast. I don't have to worry about my prompt leaving my computer. There's no security concerns with it going to a third party API. I don't have to wait for the third party API to basically throttle uh, my requests if I'm making too many requests. It's just me and my MacBook Pro. And as you can see, the GPU usage drops back down when it's done. So now what I wanna do is I want to actually create a really basic application that is going to do that same type of thing. So I wanna show you that you can build your own applications on top of these local models. So with my Tanstack start application over here, I want to just prompt AI. I'm gonna say, can you build me a basic chat application with a, an input and a form? which needs to chat with this API endpoint locally. And I want to paste in this API call as an example. So if you want to access this locally running model, remember in the Docker desktop settings, we turned on that port so that we can actually access our engines locally. So you'll make a request to this port slash engine slash llama.cpp v1 chat completions. And this API is standard with like the open AI uh, SDK standards. And you'll see over here, we basically do a post request. We do a content type with application JSON, and we also need to define what model we're using. So if you go back to Docker desktop, I do believe that's the model we're using, AI slash Llama 3.2, AI Llama 3.2. And then you can pass it the messages like you would if you're connecting with like the open AI SDK. So let's just go ahead and kick off this agent and let it try to build out this single page app that should hopefully connect to my um, locally running model. And uh, it's already done. So this is it. Let's just go ahead and say, what is the capital of New York? And I'll click send. And I'll have the network tab open just in case this were to throw some type of some error. We can see it. I'll click send. And it said fail to fetch. So we got to figure out why did this fail to fetch? Oh, and it looks like we got a cores issue. So we are going to actually have to like wrap this in a server function. Let me zoom out real quick. I'm going to accept this. So I'm actually going to pull that fetch request out into a Tanstack server function so that it runs on the back end of my service instead of trying to like invoke that port because of course issues. And then we're going to run that server function right here. So a little bit of manual coding we have to do. Let's see if this will actually work now. Go back to our UI and I'll say, what is the capital of Wisconsin? And I'll send that. And now AI is actually thinking and it's going to invoke that local model and it says the capital of Wisconsin is Madison. Let's just do a quick little UX improvement. Can you please improve the UX of this page? It looks really bad here, so I want this demo to be a little bit better. All right, let's test this out again. I'm gonna say list out 100 baby names for me. Okay, let's just see if AI can again give us 100 baby names. 
Now I'm not gonna add like the streaming. Typically when you're dealing with AI chat systems, it'll stream in your tokens as they're being generated. I'm not gonna worry about this for this little demo, but notice that we have all of those baby names basically outputted for us and we can see them right here. And again, that used the local model instead of having to actually connect with OpenAI and set up an API token and, and potentially get charged money. This is all 100% through Docker Desktop with their new models beta feature. All right, that was a lot of stuff we learned too. Really great new features with Docker Desktop. We talked about the MCP toolkit where you can go and install whatever MPC servers that you want and quickly connect them to your favorite MCP client of choice, such as Cursor or Claude Desktop. And then we also talked about the models feature, which allows you to pull in a bunch of different models and run them locally on your actual hardware of your laptop. If you're using a MacBook Pro or whatever, it runs very, very fast. Now, I personally use Docker Desktop for all my side projects when I'm doing development locally and also for my work projects. So me doing a sponsored video with Docker Desktop and these new features isn't something really out of my toolkit, right? I always use these things. So it's really nice that I have these great new features included with my normal workflow that I do every day. Leave a comment below if there's anything I mentioned that you think is actually really cool or you think that I missed when I discussed it in this video. Other than that, go check out Docker Desktop and these two new features. Have a good day and happy coding.